So I want to quickly look at some of the fabric elements of VMM 2012. So I've actually loaded in an SMIS provider for a, a simulator, which is actually currently uh, turned off, but I have it configured. So in here, I can go in, I made my connection configuration, the address of the SMIS actually provider, that's your NetApp simulator, and then it gathers information about the aggregates within that SAN. From in there, it actually knows about what LUNs exist on the SAN. So I can assign them to bronze, silver, gold classifications of storage service. And again, if I had lots of different uh, SANs in different locations, they would all be brought under these three categories that I defined of my storage. So if I def decide to deploy a VM to gold class storage in London, it's automatically going to know well, what LANs have enough space and can be used, maybe are not currently assigned. So I can also go in and get details about the current capabilities, how much is used. So it gives me good insight. Same thing on the network side. So I've actually got a switch external on my Hyper-V box. Within there, I went and created three sites. So if I look at my Allen one, I can actually go and show the details so I can give it a name, a description. I'm using an existing site. This is the IP address that I can actually give out to virtual machines. So when a VM is created, it can actually go and give it a static IP address from this pool that it manages. So this isn't the HTTP, this ain't VMM specific. I can reserve certain IP addresses for virtual IP, so for use with load balancers. I can do the standard configurations of gateway DNS, etc. And I could reserve specific ones. As you can see here, currently I've I created one VM and this gave it an address. So there's one missing basically from what's available to be given out. But now it means if I go and create a VM in any of my locations and I say, hey, I want to connect it to the external network, based on the location of the network, it will automatically go and give it an IP address, set the right VLAN, etc. I can have different MAC address pools for different hypervisors. So in the past, there was a challenge that VMware had to have its MAC addresses in a certain range. Well, now I can have a different MAC address pool for use with my VMware VMs and a different one for Hyper-V. I have my load balancers. So I have a software load balancer and I have a hardware load balancer, an F5 Big IP. And then within that F5 Big IP, I will define different virtual IP templates and I can say what sort of load balancing I want. So I'm using the F5 Big IP. I'm only using it for HTTP. I don't want persistence. And I can choose from the basic load balancing methods or I can create a custom one. I could also enable health monitors if I wanted to, but I've not done that in this environment. But I could insert various types of checks based on different protocols, say, hey, are you available? And once I have all of this, I have all this storage and all these networks, for example, I, I can just enable it. So for example, if I look at the properties, I can show, hey, we're hosting this host group, this is what's available. This is what we can see. I could allocate storage pools into this host group that's available on the storage side. On a particular host level, I create those virtual networks. I can actually say, hey, this network adapter right here, for example, it can connect to this particular logical network, or it can also connect to the external one. So this is why I can configure which physical adapters can actually have connectivity to the different logical networks that I've defined. So it's really, really quick high level overview but when I actually go and actually enable the storage, enable the networks, it can actually go into all that mapping. So again, on that storage side, if I actually went and performed an add here, I can select that iSCSI array. And then once I've added the iSCSI array, it will actually go and connect to that box, configure the iSCSI initiator, and I'll be able to go and add volumes that are available on that array. So VMM can do all of this. So this would be doing it kind of manually, 
But if I was doing this as part of a VM creation, it can actually go and do all of that for me. So that's that uh, quick five minute overview of Fabric.